This is episode 211 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today we're talking about the gift in emotional eating. Curious? Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food Show. I'm Stephanie Dozier, clinical nutritionist and emotional eating expert, creator of the Going to Beyond the Food method and founder of the Going to Beyond the Food Academy. Corporate executive turned health expert with my own journey with weight, body image, and food. It's now my mission to help smart, successful women like you live confidently right now and unconditionally. Ready, sister? Let's do this. Hello, sisters. Welcome back. Your fearless leader here, Stephanie Dozier, and I'm coming to you live from a freshly renovated office. I've been talking about it now over a number of podcasts, but we are done. We painted over the weekend. I relocated my desk. I arranged my new video and lighting circuit, and I'm fully there. So if you're not following me on Instagram, you've been missing this whole part of my life. But I just wanted to take this opportunity here to share with you why I did this transformation and how you can use that in your own life. My office was, my office in my home where I'm working today, was filled with items and physical stuff from back in the days where I had my clinic in Toronto. And I had moved the furniture, not all of it, because the clinic was obviously too big for what I could fit in a 10 by 10 room. But whatever was in that office was all from the days I had a clinic. I still had all the books and the referral material. I still had supplements and all of that. And it felt like I was trying to be in two places of my life. The clinical days when I had a physical clinic and this new going beyond the food method mindset and helping women with their relationship to food. And I didn't felt comfortable. I felt overwhelmed with stuff and purging my office, like literally purging the stuff in my office has been the most powerful professional experience. It's like I finally left behind my clinical work and moved in fully into this new world. I've let go to make space for new opportunity, for new direction, new avenue in this case, my business. But what can you learn from that in your own life? It's about making room in your life, purging. And the best example we can take that to is our closet, right? How many of us hold on to the different sizing of clothes old clothes. I know my mom was about holding on to clothes. She paid a lot of money in case they came back in fashion 20 years later. Like we hold on to stuff. And honestly, it's in the feeling of fear, right? So when we have the courage to let go, we open up for a lot of new things coming to our life. So I want you to take that away. Like what can you let go of things wise in your life to make room for what could be coming to you new in your life. And the word courage is something that you're going to hear me talk a lot on going. And I just want to introduce you to a new program that I'm launching for 2020 all around that word courage. And the program is called Conquer 2020 and Thrive. And this program is a high-end, high-touch, exclusive coaching program where I'm going to take 10 women on a journey of courage, on a journey of letting go, on a journey of application of the going to beyond the food method, but in a very intensive way. Because what I'm finding, the more I do this work and the more I apply the going to beyond the food method, is that the secret sauce in it all is when we are able to find our power back. Be the empowered women that we are meant to be, but that we are scared of being. 
Because when we put the finger or the blame on our body as to why we are stuck, why we are not moving forward in our life, and we make excuses for not being in our power, and we're spending all this time spinning our wheel dreaming of the moment that our body, that our relationship to food and relationship overall in our life will be just at the right place so we can finally be in our power. What are we missing in life? Now, diet culture wants us to be small, wants us to play small. Because when we play small as women... We are not disruptive to the patriarchal society that we live in. Now, again, being in our power as women means feminism. It means standing up in our truth. And diet culture doesn't want that because diet culture wants us to play small, stay small, and keep fueling the business of weight loss. Because when we are not the confident, empowered women we are meant to be, we do not disrupt. We do not challenge society. We do not grow ourselves, our business, our family, our relationship. We stay small. Conquer and Thrive is about being the light in our own life. No longer waiting of our body, no longer waiting of having the perfect relationship with our partner, with food, but instead taking action right now, taking our power back right now from that culture, standing together in that small group of curated women to show each other the path to courage. So Conquer and Thrive is a feminist movement. This is the next expansion of myself, of Stephanie. This is how I live my life. But I've kept it under the radar, right? Because I didn't want to disrupt. I just want to disrupt you. I just want to disrupt the movement that I was trying to be. And then I realized that I was hiding who I was. And yes, I'm a feminist woman. I've had a career of glass breaking, ceiling, of kicking patriarchy in the butt. But since I've been doing this work here as a clinical nutritionist, I've kind of put that aside. And I want to bring that back forward. I want you to come on this journey with me. I want you, I'm going to use a, the B word here. So if you have children around, cover their ears. I want you to be the kick-ass bitch that you are meant to be just like I am, living on my own, building my own business, and not waiting for anything to happen anymore. So if you are interested in taking this journey with me, very, very small group, you can go to the show notes, Conquer and Thrive 2020. This is a, by application only. So I'm going to have interview with everyone that applies, and I'm going to make sure that I'm the right fit for you and that this program is the right fit for you because this program is going to be high gear, very intense. So there has to be the space in your life for you to do this work with me and you have to be ready. And on the reverse, you can ask me all the questions and make sure that I'm the right fit and that this program is the right fit for you. So it's an interview based application first interview, and then I select the woman and then the goal is to start in January with a goal setting workshop. So that means I'd like to have all the interview done in the month of November and starting to do some pre-work right before Christmas. So if you think that that's right for you, I would welcome your application. And I wanted to do this interview, not this interview, but this podcast today, because one of the foundational aspect of being in our power to conquer, to thrive is to see our relationship to food and our body as a gift. Is to be able and willing to change the glasses that we wear. And that's how I'm going to determine if women are ready. Because if you come to this interview with 
no, 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 no. I still have to lose weight. Like I want to do this program because I want to lose weight to be in a thinner body because when I'm in a thinner body, da, 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 da. And you're just repeating diet culture, then you're not ready. I want women who are saying, F diet culture. I'm ready to do this work. Show me how to do it. And the first step is to change your perspective on the relationship to food. And in the context of emotional eating, that means seeing emotional eating as a gift. So here's what we're going to do for the next, hopefully, 20, 25 minutes. I'm going to give you some context on emotional eating. And then I'm going to answer question about emotional eating because this is a huge topic for all of you. On Instagram story, I opened up the box about emotional eating question, and within 24 hours, I was flooded with question, which is amazing, and I welcome all the question, but that tells me this is a deep, deep, deep issue that we all need to bring forward to the table and do the work. So I have answered a few questions today here and the remainder question were answered on Instagram stories. So if you submitted a question and you don't see it here on a podcast, go on the stories on the highlight reels. For those that are on Instagram, you'll know exactly what I mean. I've saved all my answer for you. So let's start with the basic, what the heck is emotional eating? Most women can relate to emotional eating in some way. So 99.9% of us are emotional eater. Is when we use food beyond physical hunger, anything that we eat beyond feeling hungry can be categorized as emotional eating. Now, if you, quote, want to think about binge eating, you want to think about overeating. These are all under the umbrella of emotional eating because you are responding with food on something else than hunger. Now, emotional eating is prevalent in women. And in part of that is because we are more emotional than men. Now, this is This is a debate that we can have between men and women, but I strongly believe that we as women, and science is is also demonstrating that, that we are more sensitive to emotion, which is the base of emotional eating, than men. So just want to clear out the distinction between emotional eating, binge eating, and overeating. And I want you to think of it as a continuum, okay? So when we eat for non-physical hunger condition, we trip over into this new continuum that's called emotional eating. When we eat to suit an emotion, right? Emotional eating, and then you have towards the, I want to say end without labeling it, of the continuum, the binge eating, right? And I'm going to give you three little questions to help you understand that. But binge eating involves eating a large amount of food in a short period of time while feeling a lack of control. And that's critical. Binge eating versus emotional eating, we feel out of control and it's a large amount. Where emotional eating, and you'll see in the question, is often described as mindless eating. So it's not a large amount of food. It's just bringing food to our mouth, right, when we're not hungry. So there's three questions you want to pay attention to start navigating this continuum. How else are you coping with difficult emotion? Is food the only way or you have other methodology? How much you're eating will also determine where you are on the continuum and how often you use eating as a coping strategy for uncomfortable emotion. Now, what about overeating? Now, overeating is 100% diet culture created. Think of it. Overeating what? Who determines when it's over or under? The only way for you to have a qualification of over or under is because you have an ideal amount 
of food you should be eating, right? You've either been told this is how much you should eat, you have a portion control idea, so you have a, an amount that external measure is telling you you should be eating, and you go past this amount. So if you live in this world of that culture, then when you pass the amount you should be eating, then you are overeating, But when you ditch diet culture and dieting and you come over to the world of intuitive eating, there's no such thing as overeating because the only determining factor of how much you should eat is your internal hunger and fullness cue, right? And while you learn intuitive eating, at least the way I teach it, you learn mindful eating. So when you are in the experience of eating, you are being present with your food. So then that eliminate the possibility of eating, quote, mindlessly, because you are with the experience of eating at that moment. There's nothing else going on in your life. So for all of you who are using the word overeating, that there's like r light bulb that lights up in my brain every time I hear that, because it means that there's an ideal amount of food that externally we are being told we should be eating. Now, I use overeating all the time because that's the word that you recognize. It's also, call it a marketing strategy, because if I was to talk about interoception and eating cues and all of that, when I put my material out to the world, people will be like, eh, no idea what this is next, right? So you'll hear us or read often us using the term overeating because that's what women use when they are in diet culture. So think about that. Where are you with your diet culture adoption into your life? If you are still using the word overeating, it's Number one, it's a sign that you haven't done the work of intuitive eating and that you're still subconsciously attached to the idea of controlling food. Diet culture and society puts a negative spin on emotional eating for that same reason, because emotional eating leads you to eat past the ideal amount of food, right? So diet culture and dieting hates and shame and want to give you all kinds of trick to stop emotional eating because it wants to control how much you eat. The second reason why people so badly want to stop overeating is because they don't understand it, right? When we understand that emotional eating is actually a gift and it's brilliant, then we no longer are in a state of fear, So if you could take one thing away from this podcast today is that shifting that perspective from being afraid of emotional eating because you are still in diet culture, afraid of gaining weight, of cheating on your diet, all of that stuff, or not losing the weight, right? That's why you want to stop it versus, huh, emotional eating is a gift. It is a way for me to connect with myself because that's what emotional eating is right? If we break down the word emotional eating, it's emotion and eating in response of emotion. So we have to ask ourselves, what the heck is emotions, right? So for those who don't know, emotion is a mood, a state of mind derived from our thoughts and our perspective in life. So if you're new to this podcast or new to the world of going beyond the food, We did a podcast recently on self-coaching where I dive into the world of thoughts and emotion and action. And basically, I'm teaching you that all your emotion in your life are a result of the way you think. And we'll link to that into the show notes. We also have a great article on that. But understand that your emotion are the outcome of how you think, right? So, quote, if you want to stop emotional eating, quote change the way you think, then the emotion that you will derive will no longer be, quote, negative, an emotion that you're uncomfortable with, but instead there'll be emotion that move you forward to conquering and thriving into your life. The emotion that will engage you in taking the power back into your life. Now, 
I want to get a little bit sciencey here to also talk about emotion as being sensation into your body. And that's what we teach when we teach self-coaching is that the emotion are actually a burst of energy traveling through your nervous system to give signal to the rest of your body. What we are scared of, of uncomfortable emotion that makes us reach to food is this sensation in our body. We feel those emotions deep down in our body, consciously or not, and we're like, oh my God, I don't like those emotions, these sensations in my body. Let me grab food, who's going to create a dopamine rush into my brain and makes me forget this discomfort in my body for a moment. Emotional eating 101 from a science perspective, right? Because human are wired to seek comfort, to seek pleasure. And when we feel discomfort, when we don't feel pleasure, we feel fear, anxiety, we want to get out of that sensation. And then we use food. And that's, again, the shift. Once you understand all those components, you're like, well, my emotion are actually a radar in my life. The gift of emotional eating is this ability to see through life using our emotion without being afraid of our emotion. So let me put that into a different perspective. Emotional eating opens you up to seeing life in a different perspective that's going to lead you to be more at peace and in a state of health. Because emotional eating will make you see your emotion and will make you see, well, when I think this way, when I do this, I feel anxiety. Perhaps I need to stop thinking like this. Perhaps I need to stop doing this so I don't feel anxious. Instead of being unconscious of the way we think, being unconscious of what we do, feeling anxiety and saying, oh my God, that's, that's so overwhelming. Let me grab food to numb out the sensation of anxiety into my body. Emotional eating is brilliant because it's the radar for your life. When you can start seeing your eating behavior as a way of getting to know you better, of taking control back onto your life by being guided by your eating choice. Emotional eating allows you to ask powerful questions, to change your life if we do one thing, if we drop judgment and become curious. And this is where the link between emotional eating and diet culture is so powerful because diet culture tells you to judge emotional eating. What I'm asking you to do today is to drop the judgment and become curious and ask yourself, huh, I wonder why I eat every night after eight o'clock. And then you're going to be able to face your truth. So how do we stop emotional eating? By shifting from judgment to curiosity, for holding the space in our life to be courageous and looking at our life from a different perspective. For me, shifting my perspective of emotional eating has been the changing point in my life. It's been a gift. It sent me down the path of healing using my relationship to food, to weight, to my body as a way of seeing what's going on in my life. When I was able to stop judging emotional eating, I automatically stopped judging myself. So I'm going to leave you with this, and then we're going to go into some application with some questions. Question number one that was submitted And I'm going to read it to you as is. The thing I struggle the most with when it comes to food is wanting to keep eating mindlessly in the evening after I'm physically satisfied with food. Have a great dinner, feel satisfied, but then come the evening and I just want to eat. It's usually that I want to numb out and relax after an anxiety-filled day, especially stressful day at work. 
Also, at a party and the food is so delicious, I eat past full just because it tastes good. So with all the theory I gave you at the beginning, I think you're able to answer that question with me. Number one, and this question, by the way, was from Julie. Question number one is mindless eating. Mindless eating says that you're not, and you describe it as is, you're not present with your food. When I want to bring your attention is nighttime, because that came back with probably 60% of the question, nighttime eating. Here's what really happened at night. We actually wind down, right? And we are being present with ourselves. Because the fact is when we wake up in the morning till about six or seven o'clock at night, we just go, 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 go. And if you don't have a practice of mindfulness throughout the day, you're not present in your body the whole day. And all of a sudden you get the kids fed, do the dishes, then you end up on the couch watching TV and all of a sudden you are connected with your reality. And that is when you feel stress. That's when you feel anxiety. You have no tools for dealing with that. The only one you have is the one that society is acceptable, which is food. And then you start eating. So the gift of emotional eating in this particular situation is the radar in your life to let you know that perhaps There's way too much stress in your life at work, as this lady said, and that your anxiety is off the roof. And then instead of wanting to control, quote, emotional eating at night, why don't we look at the amount of stress we have in our life? Now, part two of this question is also this whole party situation when I eat, quote, delicious food. The word that gave you away, Julie, is the word delicious. That tells me that there is some kind of food rule into your life, good or bad food, and that there's not enough satisfaction around food in your normal food, which is a cornerstone principle of intuitive eating is finding satisfaction in what we eat. So when we end up at the party with satisfying food, we don't want to eat at all. Because we're satisfied day in and day out with the food choice that we make. So my advice to you is find satisfaction day in and day out with food. Question number two is from Bridget. And she opened her question with this. Simply stated, I overeat. I'm 50 years old and four times now in my life, I have lost 20 to 40 pounds and then gained it all back over a period of time. The longest I kept it off was two years. Rationally, it makes no sense and frustrate me to no end. So there's many layers to this question, but here's the one I want to point out here. Diet culture. The only way we know to manage weight is to control a food. And that's what this entire question is centered around, right? Is weight, 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 body, 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 body. Not about, hmm, wonder what's not working. Like she's 50 years old. So she's had 30 years of conscious adulthood living, perhaps 30 years of dieting, she's repeating the same pattern four times, and she's clearly saying it's not working, yet she's repeating it. Not asking the deeper question, wonder why it's not working. Your body will keep doing that, Bridget, and all of you, because dieting doesn't work, right? So these messages of weight regain and overeating are just that messages that things are not working in your life. And restriction will only create even more overeating. When we restrict, we automatically trigger our reptilian brain to want to eat everything that's restricted. So the gift of emotional eating here is that diet don't work. And the body messages you're experiencing are pretty damn strong. What if you drop the fear of weight gain? What would happen? What would you discover about yourself? All the things, I can tell you because I lived it. When I dropped dieting after 25 years, I was forced to see all the other aspects of my life 
that I didn't have time to look at because I was so obsessed with weight, body, and food. And when you drop this obsession, you create a whole bunch of space into your life to improve your mental, your emotional, your spiritual well-being. Will that lead to a weight loss or weight gain? Perhaps, we don't know, but it's irrelevant because you are able to find your power, your happiness in these other aspects of your life. The next question is from Barbara, and I picked this one because I know there's a fair number of you under this situation here listening to this podcast because I've discovered that the Going to Be on the Food Show is a podcast recommended by eating disorder therapists, like the specialists of eating disorder that have all this brain knowledge about eating disorder recommend my podcast. So Barbara came to us from that perspective. I discovered your podcast a month or two ago. My adult daughter has an eating disorder, and in learning about eating disorder, I've discovered that I have been suffering from a strong diet mentality for decades, and my eating tends to bounce back and forth between restricting and binging. I've always managed to maintain a weight body size that is, quote, and she used a quote herself, acceptable to society, but I would like to free myself from the diet mentality and maximize my health and happiness. I'm hoping that intuitive eating can help me do that and eventually help my daughter too. So I want to point out just a small segment of her question here is that binge eating, right, which is the, like the and tell of the continuum of emotional eating is irrelevant to body size. And Barbara is a perfect example of that. She's been able to, quote, maintain a weight body size, yet she was, quote, binging. What Barbara is experiencing tells me she's probably 40 plus years old. And many of you come to going beyond the food at that stage. Because now you've had... 30 years of adulthood living and shit has happened along the way. And often a massive trigger moment for her, her adult daughter's disease has triggered her to look at herself, her life in a different perspective. For me, it was ending up in hospital and being diagnosed with a bunch of chronic condition But for many of us, unfortunately, we have to wait till there's such dramatic event in our life. And that is the gift of emotional eating. If we, at 20 years old, 25, we were taught to look at our relationship to food as a radar for our life, what would we have avoided? What would we have done differently if food, body, and weight wasn't dictated by how diet culture wants us to see it, but instead as a message from our body? The gift of binge eating in this case is the power to ask for help. And that's why Barbara is here. And hopefully Barbara will come into one of our programs so we can support her with a structured approach that she can in turn teach to her daughter. The power of asking for help is the gift of binge eating and even emotional eating. And that she can in turn, and she fully acknowledged that in her question, I have to heal myself first so that I can pass on that gift to my daughter. These are all the gift of emotional eating if we're willing to look at it from a different perspective. Last question. Gaudi, and I'm hopefully (laughs) pronouncing your name right, G-A-U-D-Y. My biggest struggle with food is the negative emotion I find I am using to identify with it. Reoccurring sessions of binging are more common, and every time the feeling that I'm getting is that it's a way to punish my lack of effort. Low motivation, low focus, yo-yo dieting, constantly being on and off the wagon, recalibrate, start again, quit again. These are becoming predictable scenarios that always end in a guilt-loaded session of binging. Meanwhile, the feeling of loss and despair keep increasing. It's been a five-year journey. I lost 70 pounds and gained 30 of those back. 
I am terrified of gaining all of it back. I feel desperate for a solution. This question is beautiful because she has her own answer in the way she formulates it. She fully knows, right, that her relationship to food is emotional. She fully can see the dieting cycle. So, Gaudi, Gaudi, you are like, quote, an advanced ready student, like you are so ready to go beyond the food. It's unbelievable because you see all of this. But although you see it, and many of you see it, the fear of our body image, of our sexual fraction of gaining weight is so potent for you that you don't want to take action on what you know is right. I see that every day. And I know I'm going to see that to all the women that are going to apply for Conquer and Thrive 2020. I know when I'm going to ask women, are you ready to gain weight? Because that's my quiz question to know where you are in the spectrum of diet culture. And the answer I know is going to be 90% no. Some of them will be say, I'm not ready, but I'm okay if I have to do it. Just show me the way, right? And that's okay. That, that's what I'm here for. But she says it here. Right? She's terrified. That fear, Gaudi, is what's driving the emotional eating, the binging, the repeated cycle. So what you have to work on, and that's the gift of emotional eating, is the fear. Is doing the work that the weight gain and the way your physical body is will no longer trigger fear in you. And guess what? Emotional eating and binge eating will drop like magic and you'll be able to feed yourself intuitively and live other segments of your life with that same integrity into your power and that same state of intuition because you will no longer be driven by fear. And I can guarantee you if I was to talk to Gaudi alone, there's other part of her life where she lives out of fear instead of love. And that's the gift of emotional eating. One last question, and I promise we're done. Maria, Maria says, I think my biggest struggle with food and eating is that I have always had an unhealthy relationship with it. It's a control tool. It's an emotional crutch. It's a punishment for me, each depending of where I am at this time. And I picked this question because It reflects another segment of you where you are, quote, labeling your relationship to food as healthy and unhealthy. And if that's you, that means that you are still judging your relationship to food instead of seeing it as a gift, as a radar of what's going on into your life. If you had emotional intelligence, the ability to regulate your emotion, you weren't afraid of quote, negative emotion, you were able to navigate all kinds of emotion, then you wouldn't use food to control. You wouldn't use food for an emotional crutch because being anxious is just an emotional burst, right? I have tools that I know how to use. I'm a, I use journaling. I have a meditation practice. I know how to breathe, like all kinds of tools that I can tap into and I can quote, ride the wave of my emotion and anxiety, and it's just going to pass. Because the truth is, all emotion are just a wave. They come in and then they leave. Anatomically, (laughs) that's what a burst of energy is in your nervous system. It doesn't stay there. The only reason why emotions stay stuck in your body is because you keep repeating the thought that created it in the first place. Going beyond the food, right? Our relationship to food is not about food. It's about how we think and how we engage with our emotion. So the gift of emotional eating in this case is about changing the narrative around food. And then having the power to go beyond the food and educate ourselves around other ways of coping with our emotion, becoming emotionally intelligent, changing the state of our thoughts so that emotion comes back to just being a radar in our life. So I'm going to leave you with this. The gift of emotional eating is all about the way we choose to look at emotional eating. 
You can choose to see emotional eating as something to destroy yourself with, right? Or to empower yourself with. That it is emotional eating, binge eating, overeating. It is simply a message from your body to let you know that there's something to be looked at, to be investigated, to be understood in your life. The real question is this, do you have the guts, the courage to look into emotional eating differently? Or will you instead go back to what is comfortable, control, restriction, and dieting? I hope this podcast has helped you. If it is, please leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, whatever device you're using to listen to the podcast right now. And I will see you on the next episode 212. And we will be starting a episode series through the month of November and December on weight loss, right? The science of weight and weight management in the human body. The next episode will be answering the question, but I need to lose weight, right? That's often what I get when people, we talk about food, but Stephanie, I need to lose weight. My doctor told me so. Episode 214, we'll talk about set point and the science behind set point. 218, we're going to talk about BMI. That's going to be very interesting. 219, we're going to talk about weight stigma. So that's going to come to you in chunks over the next two months prior to the end of the year. So I look forward to seeing you. I love you, sister. And I'll chat on the next episode.